Friends, today, uh, as I mentioned in our announcements, we have a very special guest. Uh, Gary Marshke is with us. Gary is the uh, outreach and development lead for uh, NAMI here in Clackamas County. And uh, Gary is a wonderful man who uh, is uh, doing a lot of good work when it comes to uh, helping us understand mental health. Uh, and I don't know about you, but as the holiday seasons um, emerge, I get all kinds of different emotions inside of me. Uh, some joy, also some sadness, all kinds of different feelings and thoughts that uh, come inside of me. We are often uh, presented by our culture uh, as having to have a sense of joy during the holiday season. And sometimes that doesn't come as easily for some of us. Sometimes it doesn't come at all for some of us. Uh, and when I was thinking about the holiday seasons and having uh, these struggles that I go through uh, with my mental health at, during the holiday seasons, I thought, um, who, can I, who can I talk to? And Gary was the first person to come to my mind. I've had conversations with Gary before here at the church, and uh, he is always so good and helpful. And so wanted to bring uh, Gary on as our guest speaker today. So uh, I'm going to bring Gary in. Hi, Gary. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you. Um, good to be seen. Uh, and <laughs> thank you, Gary. Gary is going to give us a little presentation. But before we do, Gary, I thought maybe I'd uh, let you uh, introduce yourself to us a little bit, if you would like to do that. i uh, happy to. Uh, so uh, Gary Marshke, and very good job, uh, Adam, on the, uh, the name, the last name. I want you to know I needed a lot more practice than that to get it right before I got it there. <laughs> so uh, I do friend and fundraising, uh, outreach and development for NAMI Clackamas. That's the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We're a national organization, we have some 700 affiliates in different counties around the country. Uh, so there's ones all, one all around the Portland metro area, broken down by county. So as I said, we're NAMI Clackamas. And uh, National Alliance on Mental Illness and our, our affiliate provide education, support, and advocacy for everyone affected by mental health issues. Now that means both people who identify as having mental health issues, as well as people who support them, people who care about them. So in other words, everybody else. Because yeah. uh, really, one in five people are going to be impacted by a mental health issue in any given year, but the other four or five people are impacted by that, whether it's a family member, a friend, a co-worker, somebody you see on the street, someone in your church, someone sitting next to you in the pew when you go to church. I mean, the, it, it really affects everybody. So yeah. we provide education classes and presentations much like this. We also provide uh, support groups. We have three weekly and uh, three monthly support groups, both for individuals uh, that have mental health issues as well as family members. NAMI was founded back in 1978 by a bunch of people who decided that they were frustrated with trying mm -hmm. to find their adult children uh, access to the services that they needed uh, to help their mental health challenges and their journey through recovery. And so uh, that's really our roots. Uh, our programs, again, are for both people with mental health issues themselves, as well as their family members and support system. We also have a peer resources coordinator who can help people connect with resources that they need and help them navigate through that bureaucracy. The last thing that you want to need to do uh, when you're in crisis is to have to navigate through some incessant bureaucracy to try and find services that you're entitled to. So we can help you with that as well. So that's the uh, that's the um, the the down low on uh, NAMI uh, NAMI Clackamas. I'm putting in the uh, the chat right now. Uh, I had it all set. Our website and my email address for anybody who wants to or needs to get in touch with us. Again, no insurance required, no cost required, no referral required. Nothing. You raise your hand, give us a call, say I need help. We'll do our darndest to find you uh, the help that you need. Uh, so uh, that's our that's our story. I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Uh, I love it, Gary. And we've got people from all over the world watching. Uh, and so if if you need help, just Google uh, NAMI uh, or contact uh, NAMI here in Clackamas. They'd be happy to help you out, find somebody uh, closer to you or uh, whatever we can do to help you out. So um, Gary here, is, thank you for being here, Gary. Uh, I'm going to take the rest of us off the screen uh, while you give your presentation. Uh, and then we will uh, be back afterwards. So welcome to coping with the holiday blues 
Once again, Gary Marshke with Nami Clackamas. You know, Elvis once crooned about feeling blue at Christmas time. And I'm here to tell you, it's perfectly normal to feel that way. There are a variety of reasons why your days may not be merry and bright around the holiday season. It could be that jam-packed social calendar, deadlines at work, the loss of a loved one, sunless winter days, or all of the above. And you are not alone. According to the American Psychological Association, 38% of people surveyed said that their stress increased during the holiday season, which can lead to physical illness, depression, anxiety, and substance misuse. The reasons given were lack of time, financial pressure, gift giving, and family gatherings. To make matters worse, the National Alliance on Mental Illness noted that 64% of individuals living with a mental illness felt that their conditions worsened during the holidays. However, there are ways that we can prepare ourselves and hopefully deflect some of the increased stress of the holidays. It's important to realize that we do have more control than we think we do. We've identified six common issues that come up during this time of year, as well as suggestions from mental health experts on ways to address them. Being surrounded by cheeriness can be stigmatizing when you don't feel that same level of enthusiasm as others. The pressure to be social, happy, and present can make it difficult to speak up if you feel otherwise. You may also feel left out if your spiritual traditions aren't the dominant ones on display this time of year. So what can you do about it? Recognize that you don't need to force yourself to be happy and that it's good to acknowledge feelings that aren't joyful And remember that you're not alone in feeling that way. Avoid numbing and and avoiding feelings by using alcohol or other substances, which really worsen anxiety and depression. And if possible, surround yourself with people who feel similarly. Celebrate your traditions or create new ones. According to Elsa Ronningstam, a psychologist at McLean Hospital, it's important to understand the triggers for holiday angst come from many sources. Memories, stressful patterns that seem to occur every holiday, or potential new crises are among the common triggers. So preparing yourself by understanding how different triggers can affect you can really help reduce stress. Additionally, by finding out why you become anxious or sad around the holidays, you may be able to navigate the rest of the season. Feeling sadness is normal. For many, it's a sign of struggling with depression. Learn about the condition's symptoms and how they can be treated successfully by going to the website that you'll see down below. And I do believe that um, uh, Pastor has a a PDF, which uh, he can share with uh, any of you that would like, and it has all the active links, so you can just click on that. It really is hard if you try and click on it right now on your screen, because I don't think it'll work. But you can find all kinds of information about uh, depression at the NAMI website. If you're living with grief, loss, trauma, or loneliness, it can be easy to compare your situation to others, which can increase feelings of loneliness or sadness. Take time to check in with yourself and your feelings and have realistic expectations for how the holiday season will be. If you're dealing with loss or grief, gently remind yourself that as circumstances change, traditions will change as well. And if holiday observances seem inauthentic right now, you don't need to force yourself to participate. During this time, connect with and plan to check with a support group, a therapist, your faith community, or friends who understand. As much as possible, let your loved ones know how they can support you, whether it's helping you with shopping or meeting up for a regular walk. Often people want to help, but they really don't know what to say or where to start. We all have our own personal history with holidays, We dream about uh, the way holidays are supposed to be, which can be a dangerous perspective. We get caught up in wanting to do it all, but we can aim to set more realistic expectations for ourselves and for others. Accept your limitations and be patient with others too. Try to see others' points of view and recognize that we're all feeling a little stressed, especially this year. Prioritize the most important activities or schedule get-togethers for after the holidays. If you feel overwhelmed by social obligations and what others are asking of you, 
learn how to be comfortable with saying no. Expectations to celebrate holidays in a specific way can bring up old trauma or family conflicts. For self-care, consider outlining your plan for the season. And speaking of self-care, make a schedule of when you do your shopping, baking, cleaning, and be sure to schedule time to take care of yourself. You may choose not to celebrate at all. Instead of spending the holidays the way you think you should, you might opt for an activity you actually feel like doing, whether it's making a favorite dish or maybe a Netflix marathon. Regardless of your plans, it can be helpful to communicate intentions to family and friends early in the holiday season so everyone knows what to expect. You know, it's very common to get caught up in the commercialization and the marketing of the holidays. We can feel stressed about spending on a strained budget or from trying to find just the right gift. Advertisers will take advantage of our susceptibility, but we have the ability to put it in perspective and remind ourselves that we're the ones creating that anxiety and we're the ones who can reduce it. You know, giving to others is not about spending money. And of course, what goes along with setting realistic expectations is maintaining a budget and being transparent. So consider how much money you can comfortably spend and stick to the amount. If purchasing gifts for everyone is difficult, consider having a secret Santa or a white elephant exchange to reduce the number of items everyone needs to buy. You can also simply let people know that you're unable to give gifts this year. It's an old adage, but sometimes personal gifts like a poem, short story, or framed photo are the best ones. You can also give the gift of helping a neighbor a friend, a family member, or a stranger. It's the act of giving that's more important than present. Our generosity can be a gift to ourselves because when we focus on others and less on ourselves, we tend to reduce our anxiety. In the Northern Hemisphere, the holidays coincide with the winter's lack of available sunlight. Less exposure to natural light can lead to new or increased symptoms of depression. Try to get as much sunlight as possible. In fact, today's a perfect day to do that, it looks like. To boost your mood and regulate sleep, schedule outdoor exercise in the middle of the day when the sun is the brightest. If you can, work near a window throughout the day. Even outfitting your home with warm, bright lighting can help improve your mood. Many traditions this time of year incorporate candles or twinking lights, and they do that for a reason. If you feel the need to slow your pace and hunker down this time of year, consider reframing the winter months as an opportunity to work on quieter projects. You know, things like uh, suited for the outdoors, like writing, knitting, or taking an online course. And then seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, that's a more severe form of the winter blues. And according to researchers, people, a percentage of people in the United States who struggle with SAD ranges from 1.5% in Southern Florida to 9% up in the northern states. And if you feel helpless or hopeless, have suicidal thoughts or changes in appetite and sleep patterns, talk to your doctor. Effective treatments for SAD include light therapy, talk therapy, and medication. While it's true that many of us have friends and family to connect with during the holiday season, there's also the danger of becoming isolated. If you're predisposed to depression or anxiety, it can be especially hard to reach out to others. Remind yourself of people and places and things that make you feel happy. Consider scheduling a regular call or video chat with friends on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. That way you don't have to think twice about making the effort. Take advantage of other ways to connect by sending out holiday cards and communicating with family and friends by phone, text, email, social media. Try calming activities like reading, meditating, and gratitude journaling. That can be really helpful if you don't feel comfortable in social situations. And don't forget about self-care. We know the importance of a balanced diet, moderate exercise, and plenty of sleep. But because there are so many distractions and stressors this time of year, we lose sight of some of the basic necessities. We need to take care of ourselves and pay increased attention to ensuring we fulfill these areas of our lives as we get closer to the holidays. And finally, we have a short list of resources. Uh, there's a lot of information there. 
especially with uh, uh, active links. There's also a flyer with an active link to a webinar hosted by our Florida affiliate around the holiday blues. And remember to call 988. That's the new emergency number. It's the new 911 for anybody with mental health issues for you or anyone you know. And I can't emphasize that enough. It's not just for the person in crisis. If you know someone that you feel is in crisis, someone that you care about, you don't know how to deal with it, you don't know what to do, call 988. They'll help you figure it out. They'll often be able to not only refer you or that person to resources that you can utilize, but they can often get on the phone with that person and talk them through the crisis. So 988 is a resource you should take advantage of. You should also know that if you call from a 503 or a 941 or, or 971 or a 541 or any of the Oregon area codes, you will get someone in Oregon. Now, if you have one of those phones that you're calling from outside the area, uh, it says like a 602 area code is your phone, but you're here locally, uh, then you'll get connected to someone in the 602 zone, but they can also refer you back up to someone in Oregon so that you can get to talk to somebody locally. 988 is a resource you should always remember to, to take advantage of, if at all possible. And that's my presentation. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. And as the slide will show, we'll return you now to your regularly scheduled programming. Thank you, Gary. That was that was wonderful, and uh, always good to have you with us. Uh, we've had a couple of questions, and uh, friends, if you've got questions, I'm sure we can get back to you uh, soon um, with your questions. But Happy there was to. one question. That there was one question that came in here about, uh, I've heard of the, the uh, Aislinn asks about the, um, you, you talked about the sunlight um, not being around and that being difficult. Um, there are like those sun lamps. Do you know about those sun lamps? Yeah, yeah those lights are those, uh, Aislinn is asking if those are helpful. I, I know people who have used them and they say that they're, that they're helpful. Very much yeah. so. Uh, full yeah. spectrum lighting, those are wonderful to have. Uh, anything that can get you that sunlight, that vitamin D uh, that you need. I know I'm on vitamin D supplements. I crave vitamin D uh, when when it's cloudy and and uh, and all. You know, I was originally I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, where they're getting a whole bunch of snow right now. Mm -hmm. But one thing I can say is is when it's not snowing, more often than not, it's sun shining uh, out there. And so you know that to me was something that could really boost your mood in the winter time because you could go out and you see this this pristine snow which granted is a real pain in the butt to try and clean out of your driveway when you're trying to get out and go to work or go to church or go somewhere else however when you see the sunlight bouncing against that fresh white snow and you smell that crisp clean air it's amazing uh and so i was often as not wearing sunglasses all summer or all winter i mean because uh, it was so bright uh, so yeah i think anything that can give you that vitamin d that can give you that that sunshine that can make you feel that way it doesn't have to be something that's, you know, prescribed or something as well. You've got to get this full spectrum. It could be anything that makes you feel better. Just connect with it. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Gary. And uh, Lita says here this, I know this will embarrass you. People like Gary at NAMI uh, are our saints working on our behalf for the, uh, for the good of all. So Gary, thank you for being here. It thank you for those enjoyed. kind words. And it's my pleasure. Awesome. Awesome. All right, my friend, we will, uh, we will see you soon. And uh, I'll, I'll be there in person someday soon. I look forward to it.